Welcome back, and greetings, travelers. So today's episode, as promised, we will cover AI. This is a little bit more information, and this is where you can really start to flesh out your NPC to give them more feeling of being alive. So when it comes to enemies, by default, they're friendly. They're not going to attack anything. So th we're going to kind of cover, in the Advanced tab, one bit today which is going to be factions now you'll have three automatically friendly aggressive and neutral neutral they won't attack any well none of them really attack anybody all right so if you want however to have them attack hostile factions you go yes defense faction in other words if another guard is in trouble and is within range of this guy do you want them to defend them yes now, if you kill this guy, or you know, or any member of that faction, uh, how many points do you get? And you can add so many points to whatever faction. You can create new factions. And what we're going to do is show you that real quick, because in the factions here, let's our guard is friendly right now. Hostile factions, other the factions he will go after and attack, are aggressive and neutral. You can have it set attack by mobs. You can hide the faction if you want. I leave it no. Uh, the points, this is the range. In other words, when something's, as it says here, the default, that's what they get. Which means every player automatically is high in that faction. You can set it to 500, so they're automatically unfriendly to neutral. Uh, 750, they're always neutral, and you go 1500, which here are automatically friendly. So, this is where under advanced you choose the specific NPC which faction it's going to be. So, that'll help you here. So, on found enemy, that's how we'll determine if it is an enemy that it's going to fight. Is it one of the standard mobs, like a zombie, a skeleton, they'll attack those? But more importantly, if you have other NPCs for other factions, will they retaliate? Uh, panic, so you can set it up kind of like a villager, which means they will try to run away, run in circles, whatever they can do to try to get away, they panic. Retreat, they will run, just run away. They are straight, straight a line as they can to get away. Nothing, they just stand there and take it. No, that's, They don't do anything about it, they don't care, they're just, you know, whatever. Uh, door interact. By default, they cannot open doors. And yes, this only means vanilla doors, not modded doors. That is something that almost every mob has an issue with. But you can, by default, they're disabled. In other words, they can't open a door. They'll do like a zombie, break it down. They can open and close it. I usually leave it to open if it's a friendly and they need to be in there. Swim. When they hit the water, can they swim in the water or do they sink to the bottom like a stone? And if you want to go realistic, he's got all that armor on, we can go no. Shelter from. By default, they don't shelter from anything. But you do have mobs like the Enderman and the zombie and the skeleton that will try to hide from what can happen. So same here, you can have it shelter from darkness, which means they will go into a building at night. Sunlight, like a zombie, they will, same thing, they will go run away. Must see target. So, do you want them to have line of sight? Uh, that could be important. I mean, if you are trying to recreate some kind of battle concept, you know, theoretically, they can't hit you if they don't know you're there. That's what this is for. If you go no, you get within their detection range, they're automatically going to start attacking you. Uh, can sprint. In other words... Can they run, or do they just walk? And that's what that's for. Avoids water. So if you have a problem with NPCs going into the water on when they're wandering, hitting avoid water, they will generally do what they can to not go in the water and stay on solid ground. Return to start. So if an NPC gets stuck and they cannot go anywhere, 
after a certain period of time, they will automatically teleport back to their starting position, and that's what this is for. Leap at target. So when they go to enter combat, do you want them to leap at the target or just run at them? So that's up to you. Uh, can fire indirect. In other words, same thing as musty target. If... You know, and this is, they have to have the bow and arrow. There's no arrow, and matter of fact, let's just show you real quick. Let me get an arrow. Come on. So if we put an arrow in here, that indicates that he can now fire. So if we go back to AI, see now, can fire in direct. Can he fire without seeing you? Yes or no? So those are some of the options you can do on that. Uh, use range attack. In other words, if there is the option, they will always resort to ranged attacks versus melee until the player gets, you know, character, monster, whatever, gets too close, then they'll go to melee. Otherwise, they will always resort to their bow first. Tactical variant. In other words, how do they go into battle? By default, they rush. In other words, they will run at the whatever they're going to attack. You can have them try to dodge. So, and the engage distance is when they will start to try to fight. Otherwise, they will try to dodge whatever it is. Surround, if you have several different NPCs, they will actually try to surround on all sides rather than come at them from the same direction. Hit and run. Go in, like here, fight if this close. So if they're this close, they'll fight, they'll try to run away, they'll hit, they'll run away. Ambush, they will wait until the player gets close enough and then try to jump out at them and get them. Stock, they're going to try and follow. And when they get close enough, then they will try to attack. Cobwebs. Simple. When they hit a cobweb, do they slow down like a player or not? That's what that's for. The biggest one, movement. So you have several different types of moving. You have standing, wandering, moving path. So standing, they do like the guy is right now. He just stands there. Wandering, they will actually look like they're walking around in random directions within the range that you set. By default, it is five blocks. Keep in mind that is five blocks in a line whether there is something around them or not. And what I've seen is, let's say you have them right next to a wall, but they could go five blocks on the other side of the wall if they went around it. They tend to actually sometimes will find their way around that wall to get over there to move which I think will tend to have issues with, again, unloaded and loaded chunks. Interact with NPCs. What that means is if they come across another NPC, do they stand there and look like they're interacting with each other, talking to each other? Animation. Normal, sneaking, aiming. In other words, well, I'll show you. So let's pick dancing. So that means when they stop, they will look like they're dancing. And you have crawling, hugging, and normal. Stop on interact. Now, see how he's walking away when I'm doing stuff. If you do stop on interact, he will not move or do anything while I am talking or in this GUI. Walk speed default is 5. If you want them to walk slower or faster, just decrease or in increase that. The moving path, that's where using the sword that I showed you, the pathing tool. So you would have them set to this. Animation, same thing, you choose whether they look like a normal NPC or if they're dancing or, you know, what have you. Movement, that's the one where they, do you want them to go to the end of the line and stop or go to the end of the line and then reverse and go back to the beginning. Pauses. Pauses are at each point, so if you create several points in a path, they will randomly have a time frame between when they hit one point before they move to the next to give it more of a natural look as they go on there. Same thing with the stop on interact, and same thing with the walking speed. Now with standing, position offset, we're going to do no rotation at all. Uh, let's do head, that way it doesn't move. So when you first place an NPC, they will have a direction they face, north, south, east, west. Now, if you want them to face, let's go in here. So if you want them to face, let's say I want to go sitting. If I want them to sit in a chair, but the chair is facing a different direction, 
Well, all right, I'm going ahead of myself. Position offset is if you want them to be right center of the block where they're at, or do you want them to actually be in a further direction? Like if you're on a bed, they're going to lay flat on a block where the bed should be, but they may not always be centered on the bed. So you may have to use these different offsets in order to get them to look like they're actually laying on the bed. The rotation is in regard to sitting, if you want them to face a different direction. By default, they'll face you know, whatever direction that they're placed. But let's say that the chair is a different direction, then you use this in you know, any degree, up to 359, obviously. But to basically try to get them oriented in the chair so it doesn't look like their feet are going through the back of the chair or something. The rotation, you can have it where it's manual, stocking, and that's how, basically how they're going to move when they're moving. Body, that means they will stand there and look. You have the head. You can see the head's just moving back and forth in the, the darkened background. The body be the whole thing, head, body. Stop on interact, same thing they said, and the walking speed. So that pretty much covers all the areas in the AI. Uh, if you have any other questions about what needs to be done or questions about what I've said on here, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, that's it for this episode. The next one, we will get more into the advanced tab and cover some of the options there. But I want to thank you all for coming and have a great day.